You know, what, is it, what do they say? Once this happens, stance two is a coincidence, three is a pattern. Right. You know, when, when people, three different accusers are, are all dead within the, a year, I think Kevin Spacey just picked up the phone, called Hillary, and said, uh, do me a favor and whack that guy, would you? Called Hillary. You know? I don't know that it's as, uh, as uh, simple as that, but let's talk about Kevin Spacey's relationship to not only the Clintons, but Brian Singer, who has been outed as one of Hollywood's largest uh, pedophiles via an open secret, had work all the way up through Bohemian Rhapsody, which won a ton of awards, made him a ton of money, and was even signed on to do Red Sonia. Well, Kevin Spacey and Brian Singer kind of had their breakout hit together, and it was the usual suspects. Singer directed it. Uh, Spacey gave that amazing performance as verbal kin to AKA Kaiser Soze. Spoiler alert. Mm-hmm. Well, who distributed that Crazy. film? Miramax, Weinstein, The Slither Circle, okay? These people are so all interconnected that it wouldn't surprise me seeing that Weinstein used an organization called Black Cube to intimidate, harass, and investigate all of his accusers. And Black Cube is this Israeli firm that is based in former Israeli intelligence officers, uh, IDF, Mossad, you name it. So it would not surprise me whatsoever if uh, that group, Black Cube, was under the employ of Spacey. Now, I'm not accusing them of murder, but who does those sorts of things? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. you got to connect the dots. Hey, uh, what would you think of everything that took place, uh, you know, from the, the killing of the general to the missile attacks? Uh, they, they ended up warning us ahead of time before they launched their missiles. Was that just a bunch of uh, schlong waving between two countries? What's your take? Well, that that was uh, the end game of it. It certainly wasn't the very beginning of uh, that conflict. So let's take it back to just after Christmas uh, when it really starts to heat up. On December 27th, we get the fourth round of OPCW leaks. That's the Office for the Proliferation of Chemical Weapons, basically to get rid of chemical weapons and stop their proliferation coming out and further proving there was no chemical attack in Duma in 2018. Say it with me. No chemical attack. (laughs) Assad did not gas his own people. It's been proven beyond a reasonable doubt now. U.S. media blackout, Western media blackout, you bet. You're not going to read it in the New York Times. You're not going to see it on CNN. It's not going to be in the Telegraph or the Guardian. But Coincidentally, the next day, supposedly a contractor gets killed. They finally released his name, I believe, yesterday, but there was some kind of murkiness. Now, I would assume soldiers and contractors are killed in Iraq and Afghanistan all the time. That's why they're paid so much money to be military contractors. And most of the time, we really don't mention it here. Why? Because it's not convenient, but this time it was. And on the back of that contractor's death, what did we do? We drone bomb. Syria and Iraq. Notice how Syria is kind of thrown in there. Most people aren't Mm -hmm. focusing on that because of what happened in Iraq, but they let them know we're not going anywhere. So the people, rightfully, are upset. You know, their brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers just got drone bombed. People died. And uh, the people in Iraq especially have wanted U.S. soldiers out uh, out of their country for some time. So they group up, many of them peaceful protesters, surround the embassy, members of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard come in because they're allowed to be there. And why are they allowed to be there? It's not because they're U.S. allies, it's because they're Russian allies. And what? al Soleimani was the main guy who took out ISIS in Syria, Iraq, the Kurdistan border, and Lebanon. Not debatable. I just played uh, on one of my videos last night, CNN praising Soleimani uh, th- just three years ago, you know, as this general taking out ISIS. Yeah. So, Exactly. So you have this, uh, you have this uh, Baghdad uh, embassy taken over, and uh, the Prime Minister of Iraq is in contact with Trump. He lets him know that he's bringing Soleimani in so that they can negotiate terms, and hopefully there is not any more violence. So he's not there. He didn't direct this thing to take it over. As soon as he gets there, we drone bomb him. We kill him. Mm. We commit an act of war. Whether you like it or not, That's what happened, period. Amen. No discussion, okay? I'm sick of hearing he was the world's number one bad guy. 
99.99999% that's about one out of a hundred thousand people in this country knew who Soleimani was before we killed him. And don't act like you did because you didn't. Okay, and when I've got David Petraeus, Betraeus, uh, telling me it was a great thing to knock him out. When I see John Bolton licking his lips, when I see the Mattises of the world literally, yay, I know it's the wrong thing to do. And then when Trump kind of backed off after the retaliation, um, the uh, ballistic missiles into uh, military installations in Iraq, you saw Trump, he looked like a mess yesterday. You know, he, he stuttered, yeah, stammered. Uh, there were words he that he breath. completely out mispronounced. Yeah, he was really out of breath. I wasn't sure if he was sick or something, but he, he seemed very, very uh, tired. He, he yeah. spoke a few words, too. Yeah. Well, he always does that. Yeah. But, but we got the biggest missiles. I love that yeah, part. He goes, we, got, we, got, we got big missiles. Hey, Jason, a couple <coughs> questions uh, from people listening. Uh, Dave in New York. Ask Jason if he got the squall notification on his phone. What does that mean? Oh, uh, I did get the squall notification on my phone. I get all those notifications, the emergency notifications. It's funny. My sister thought the word squall was uh, funny. But squall just means that we got a really quick flash uh, winter storm where there was a ton of wind and visibility might not be that great. Okay. Uh, next question. This is from Mike. Ask Jason about possible shoot down of the Ukraine. We talked about this yesterday. Uh, the you know we obviously had flight 800 we uh, in the late 80s we actually shot down an Iranian airliner uh, could the Ukraine plane crash be related to anything that was going on militarily in your opinion I don't know how it couldn't be I mean the thing went down over Tehran it would be one hell of a coincidence and it does seem like uh, this thing was shot down with some type of a uh, either a Gatling gun or something with actual bullets. It doesn't look like it was a uh, surface-to-air no. missile, a shoulder rocket, nothing like that. Uh, the plane is on video, on fire, uh, you know, before it goes down, so obviously something occurred in the air. Uh, no survivors, and the black boxes are not going to be released. Uh, the Iranian military has surrounded the area, and you have to ask what happened there. You know, some people are saying, well, it could have possibly been the Iranian military by mistake as things were heating up and they misidentified uh, a passenger plane. Sure, that's a possibility, but there are so many other possibilities out there. I fear that um, because there's a limited amount of information and the crime scene has been uh, so heavily taken care of very quickly, we may never know what actually happened to that plane. So, yeah. so they're not going to release the black boxes, you don't think? They, they've already stated they're not going to. I mean, again, maybe uh, uh, maybe what? the... Uh, well, you know, that's shenanigans. Then, then you know. I mean, come on. Sure. Uh, you know, obviously Boeing has to be part of that. Uh, it's their airplane. Uh, yesterday we were talking about uh, Ukraine. We should be part of the investigation as well as, of course, the Iranians and that the American company, Boeing, should be involved. It's a plane crash. There, there should it's their plane. There should be an investigation they as to what, what went wrong. But Boeing's not doing well with seven thirty sevens, even though this was an older one. Um, so yeah, I kind of I'm I'm with you on that. It, it just seems like the timing. And okay, let's go all the way down the rabbit hole. I know everyone. Uh, I know you don't necessarily uh, chime in with the harp and and that kind of stuff. But the directed energy weapons, and we don't know what's in space. We were kind of goofing on that yesterday. Uh, what, what do you think is uh, um, is going on with this plane with this plane crash? Do you think it's um, I, again? I don't know that anything exotic was used. You know, we talk about directed energy weapons, or we talk about our capabilities in space. I often tell people, listen. We had a program in the 80s called Star Wars. In my yeah. opinion, it did not fail the way they said it failed. Okay, um, the weaponry we have in space is the main part of our space program. The rollout of Space Force really isn't anything new because NASA and the Air Force have been doing this for quite some time. And I would argue that the vast amount of what the United States is doing in space is military. They don't care about going to the moon. They ain't taking you to Mars. Neither is Lord Elon Musk. This is about the militarization of space. And I've done several videos over the last month on this um, from the cyber, uh, what is it, the cyber warrior or 
Cyber Soldier 2050 document to uh, a member of the Air Force leaving in the last six months and naming some pretty startling things about our capabilities in space. Let me tell you what our capabilities aren't, Ledge. Our capabilities are not able to take our astronauts with our rockets that are now an 80 plus year old technology and get them to the International Space Station. Let me repeat that for you. We at NASA can't get our own Americans up to the ISS. We failed again just after Christmas. Go check it out. It's not making headlines. People don't get it. In fact, in order to get our astronauts on the ISS, we have to use the Russians' rockets. They've yeah. got better rocket technology than we do. So what's really going on up there? I would argue it is the militarization of space, um, the attempted spread of 5G. Once again, uh, Elon Musk isn't launching us into space for travel or for mankind. No, he's launching his 5G satellite network up there called Starlink, and he's going to put thousands of those things in orbit. That's what this is really about. It's about the control grid, the track trace database society that will be managed from space. Yeah, you go all the way back to the PNAC, a project for the new American century, and you go back to that document that they released in, uh, in uh, 2000, and they talk about everything that's already taken place now uh, in, in the Middle East. It was all pretty much written in that document, uh, including you know the seven countries in five years. But I do remember them saying full-spectrum dominance from space was their ultimate goal. Full-spectrum dominance. Wow. Which is supposed to be illegal. Uh, and that's the neocons, uh, you know, and the PNAC, PNAC, Project for the New American Wasn't Century. Wasn't there some kind of an agreement among nations to not yes. militarize Yes, 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 there yes, was. Doing it. Okay. Yeah, well, we, we talked about it yesterday, you know, how many different times has the payload gone up, whether it was the space shuttle and it was like uh, classified or, right. you know, military. Yeah. And we don't know what's up there in space, but uh, hey, Jason, I know you uh, you follow uh, the controversy that's all around Conor McGregor. You're a big MMA fan. Uh, I, I know you do a lot of conspiracy stuff and 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 hard hitting investigation. But you've been kind of Trump, uh, you know, trumpeting that this man is a rapist, mm -hmm. and uh, he seems to be getting the hall pass. Go ahead and uh, give us the lowdown on what what's going on with him and Dana White. Well, great news for those that have been following my coverage on Conor McGregor. I was just reached out to yesterday by one of the moderators on Reddit, and I will be doing an Ask Me Anything on Reddit, proving beyond a reasonable doubt that there is a massive amount of evidence that Conor McGregor brutally beat and raped a woman in front of eyewitnesses over a year ago in Dublin, Ireland. And this is not a he said, she said thing. This was not in private. We have CCTV footage before and after the, the event. There was a high level of violence. The woman was choked as if she was in an MMA ring. She was bruised. She was bleeding. According to the leaked WhatsApp messages that are clearly, clearly real and between journalists in the United Kingdom and Europe, the woman had to surgically have a tampon removed from her cervix. Not only with this high level of violence, but she has turned down over a million dollar plus settlement because of it. Complete media blackout in the United States. Complete media blackout on the fact that Connor's latest conviction of punching an old man in the face on camera only yeah, cost that. him in the bar, thousand, yeah. Cost him a thousand dollars, Ledge. That was his nineteenth conviction. Nineteenth. How is he even in the country? Yeah, you know, he's a cash cow, bro. He's yeah. a cash cow for the MMA. And uh, listen, uh, we're about ready to wrap it up. So let's get all the information where people can find you. Any videos you want to uh, pimp or anything new you got going on, go for it. Sure. Please follow me at Twitter, at Jason Burmas. That's B-E-R-M-A-S. And if you want to help me out, I've got a pinned tweet describing everything in detail through mainstream media sources on Conor McGregor. Like I said, I'm going to have that Reddit AMA coming up, so we're really going to try to blow that up because the first press conference is in six days on the 15th, and they're not even sure they're going to allow questions. Well, they don't want questions because a lot of people know what's up. So please help me stop that fight. If you want to financially support me, I got to go fund me. That's how I do it. And please go check me out over at youtube.com slash 
Info Warrior, where we do it three to seven times a day on various subjects. And it's not about left, right, conservative, liberal. It's about right and wrong every time, Ledge. You are the man, my brother. And uh, sooner or later, we'll get together and throw back a couple of cold ones and actually stand in the same room. I've known you for a decade, but yes, we've never, never but wow. we've never met. But I can't thank you enough for your contribution. You always bring some great content to my program. Thank you, bro. Well, thank you, sir, and we'll see you soon. You got it, Jason Berman.